In my opinion, one of the most challenging aspects of the HoloLens is the user input. It employs three primary inputs, voice, gaze, and gestures. Still, these can sometimes feel like blunt instruments. For anyone who's used a Vive controller, you, um, you might almost be surprised at how intuitive they are. The interface on them can be discovered because it's just like manipulating a real object. You, if you spin it around, there might be something on the back. If you look at the front, there's a new tool on the front. And even if you're not familiar with controllers, they're really intuitive to use. Our latest proof of concept explores how your phone can work as a Six Degrees of Freedom controller. We can locate your phone relative to the HoloLens and use it to place virtual objects throughout the world. So the cell phone's really interesting because it's, it's a tool that we all have, right? So it seems uh, like a natural um, companion to the HoloLens. It, I don't expect us to be getting rid of our cell phones anytime soon. Um, and then on top of that, there's a more and more cell phones are learning to track themselves in 3D space. We have things like Project Tango coming out, rumors of the iPhone 8 having augmented reality features. So the idea that your cell phone would be a six degrees of freedom controller is not a, a big leap. And then on top of that, it has a 2D um, trackpad and a screen. And so you have um, the, the, the ability to mix reality in really interesting ways. We can have virtual elements that expand beyond the screen. We can have elements that are on your cell phone screen. We can see where your finger is on the screen. Um, and there's just a lot of really interesting way, things that we could do to mix and match uh, those into the uh, holographic world.